caves are unique. Um, they are pristine environments that have lasted for tens of thousands of years. Uh, especially some caves we think are going to be the best models for extraterrestrial habitation. How do you best describe a Mars lava tube? You find a similar environment here on Earth. Let's see what the bachelor's quarters look like. That would be more interesting. So the process kind of is, is we're trying to see first like where life is. So we can use this to kind of track organics and see like where they are and kind of what they are so we can see what kind of minerals we're finding. And then we can fi follow these little paths all the way down the cave and kind of see where life is. And then we can see like the things around it, like the environment, like is there water, stuff like that. And then we can kind of use that to see how life is living and then we can see like what is necessary for life to live in these caves. So our work with the spectroscopy predominantly has been attempting to follow the flow of organics through the cave. Um, and there's two different things that we measure. We measure the water and we measure the crystals. The water itself, if it has dissolved organics from the surface, under ultraviolet light will glow a very faint blue. And the more organics that are dissolved, the brighter the blue is. So drip points that are higher up in the cave, meaning closer to the surface, have more organics, they glow and fluoresce a very, very bright blue. Down at the bottom in the lake district, it's a very dim blue for the water. On the mineral side of things, we have a water created features that are called flowstone. And you can think about stalactites, stalagmites, um, cave bacon, or just where the water has been running down a slope and has built up kind of a hard water crust over time. When that's flowing from an organically rich source, then that flowstone itself is going to start trapping the organics in the water as the calcium carbonate is precipitating out. And by using our black lights on that, then we can make those fluoresce a very soft green. Um, and that soft green is very distinctive when we use our spectrometer and can measure the exact shade of green that that is. And then when you turn off the light, the crystals phosphoresce or glow in the dark afterwards for anywhere between 3 to 30 seconds or longer. See this rock feature right here with black lights, so like these black light flashlights we have, we can use them to like illuminate this and using our spectrometer we can like see on the UV vis like where the area is and like um, like this be the peaks on the areas that we can see like what colors we're getting and kind of what minerals we can kind of draw from that and then we can use like analogs and stuff that we make in the lab to kind of control and see what we're seeing in here so like if we see something like this purple and the yellow we can then take like an analog we would make in the lab and kind of use and try to replicate the spectra that we have out here to kind of see what we're using and what we're finding out in the caves so then we can trace these organics to kind of see like how life lives and where it is within the cave. Uh, go back a little bit. A little bit further here? Uh, yeah, that looks okay. Okay. You can okay. Purple two, go. 227. Cool. Purple two, go. 227. Should I do one more? Yeah, you can go. As many go. as you feel. Color is significant because um, different colors represent different things. So like, I feel like a lot of blues and stuff like that, that's the stuff that shows kind of organics and stuff with your purples and stuff. Whereas like you find like your reds and your browns and stuff and that's more like fossils and minerals and stuff like that, I guess. So continuing on within the, our cave research on this current grant, um, we're trying to push further and push deeper. We're always looking at different flowstones throughout the cave, measuring the intensity of the organic signals, uh, especially some flowstones are still what we call living flowstones, meaning the water is actively flowing on them, creating more and more. And those are definitely much more relative to what is currently going on on the surface right now. So that is the current carbon load that is entering the cave through those waters. So you can start to build a picture of both the past and the present of how the water used to work through the cave and how it is currently working and especially get an idea of how it is that the microbes down at the very bottom of the lake are thriving. And as we're pushing forward, we're trying to go deeper into the cave and we're trying to take our portable techniques further and further into the cave so we can expand the footprint and look at a larger surface area 
of the cave. Every part of the cave above it has different thicknesses of limestone, which means it has different permeabilities. And so when we hit an area that's all of a sudden very drippy, that means there's a water source right there that life could be thriving in. But then we might go another 500 feet and it's bone dry again. So life isn't gonna be established there. So it's really looking at all these little microclimates or where past microclimates have been by using our spectroscopy techniques. Thank you.